Hey, what's up guys? This is Brian at Whisper Status 74. Welcome to the community. Welcome to the channel. If this is the first time you are seeing me, please consider liking and subscribing. We are real tech for real people. Today's video is going to be about OLED, burn-in, and gaming. Many of you have questions about OLEDs now more than ever. Though they've been out for a long time, they have come down a great deal in price. They are affordable. They are available from many different manufacturers. Only more and more are coming in the next few years. And they have many gamer-centric features that many of you are interested in, but you're still very fearful and apprehensive about taking the plunge. This video is a few steps that I do on a daily basis as I game and use my OLED as a PC monitor. This video was a request. Special shout out to Andreas. He asked for this video. Andreas, this video is for you. Also, special shout out to longtime community member and friend Steve Smith, who recently went from a Sony 900E to an LG BX. Much love to you both. You guys are all gaming hard on your panels. This will not be a long video. I'm going to show you a few steps that I use my OLEDs with. We'll do a PC monitor. Um, video where there's some simple things you can do but I can just say those for you is to go into the settings hide your icons um, move your shortcuts get rid of those you don't need them and also changing your still picture to a slideshow little things like that can actually help um, avoid burning my CX the 55 inch that's behind me is gamed on it 90% of the time when it's not in use it's being used as a PC monitor for job which is in IT that is what my wife does and she does does use this particular panel since March. So we've been gaming on it hard. She's been using it as a PC monitor. And I also have another 77 inch CX, which is getting gamed on constantly, no problems with burn-in, following a few simple steps. Now for many of you, this might be too much to do, and I completely understand OLED then is not for you. Just a few simple steps, a little bit of maintenance, and um, if that's something that you wanna do, that's fine, I completely understand. Um, Simple steps, PC, PS5, PS4, whatever consoles you have, this is what I do when I game. All right, guys, we're looking at Doom 2016. Now, we're talking about the heads-up display. We're typically talking about here, here, here. These will always be there. And some games do have these options. This is what they'll look like. You might have to really look for them, but we go in here for settings, into advance, and if you go all the way down, it'll look something like this. Now, not all games have this. I really feel like they should all have it, but quickly, if we go back to seeing how bright, you know, 94 plus is and the gun, how bright that actually is. Everything else here is moving. It's just those parts of the HUD is what we're looking at, okay? So, look at how bright they are. Now, as we go back into the settings, it's under advanced, head all the way down, and you will see it here as UI opacity. We have it at 100%. You can reduce it even to 25%, which we will. Whoops, sorry about that. We will reduce it all the way down. And then back out yes we'll keep it and it is literally something you can almost see through it's pretty transparent and that will make all the difference it's still playable you can still see it you're still you know it's not like you're playing without a heads-up display but you can really appreciate the fact that it's if you look at it now you can literally almost see through it in some spots especially when it's up here so look for those settings in your console games. I believe it's available in the console version. But that little bit can help, especially in campaigns. And that's at least on Doom here. But there are several other games. I think Red Dead has one as well. All right, guys. Here we are looking at the PS5. And I want to show you here is a screen timeout. 
um, that you can actually implement on all of your devices. And I encourage you to do this on all of your devices, albeit your Apple TV or anything you have plugged in, your Roku's, your Fire Sticks. They should all have some kind of screen timeout feature where they go to a screensaver, um, anything like that. That would definitely help you. In gaming, you'll have between the Series X or Xbox or PS5 where you'll have a timeout feature. Now, as we're watching uh, the menu of the PS5, I'm going to go in and enable that quickly. And we're going to go up. We're there on the cog right now. You'll see it up top. And you're going to go down to your screen and video. And it's right down to screen. And you'll just see your just display area. You'll see dim screen while inactive. And I know five minutes doesn't seem, if you're again fearful of burn in, does not seem like a quick enough amount of time. It's fine. I mean, these things are not going to burn in quickly. And it'll give you all these different, you know, just be careful you don't put it in as don't dim. Again, five minutes. I would also, though, you know, it's okay if it dims and you walk away. But I would try to get in the habit of not letting it just run. Um, not because it's going to burn in, but just getting into the habit of not just wasting that energy and letting it just sit there. So we're going to get out of that. And then um, what I should go through is what every other you know, person has gone through with the CX or you know, your LG TVs. Is, let me just go lower the aperture so you can actually see that. Going into your settings here, these are the basic settings for OLED. And you're going to OLED screen saver here. You have screen shift. Now screen shift does move the pixels over slightly, keeps them from burning in. However, notice if you're using a PC, you might notice that part of the screen is cut off. It's really only visible for me when I'm using a PC. Um, and again, that's only in the Windows aspect of it. If you realize, if you feel like it's not fitting the screen, I would definitely disable this, but it shouldn't bother you. You're still able to use Windows perfectly fine. Then logo luminance is exactly what it sounds like. Adjust the luminance of static images such as logos, etc. Prevent quality issues. Set this to high. Um, I haven't noticed any... Um, artifacting or screen issues i've disabled all of this because my 77 inch did have severe uniformity issues i did have some issues in the whites and none of this changed it whether it was enabled or not i actually typically will disable these just because of the practices i'm going to show you i don't use my display enough or um long enough to really affect it but you know as of course with the camera you can't see that but I would enable the screen shift and the logo luminance. Make sure that's at high. Now, Pixel Refresher is a lot like, it reminds me of Plasma years ago. People fell in love with that. And on my Panasonic, it was called Screen Wipe. So what I would say is, if you're going to use this, um, I used this initially with my CX, my 77, because I had some pretty serious banding. It can help. Um, it will also go into its own. You know, there's different there's different options here on, you know, it'll do this itself after a certain amount of hours. But I look at this as like a derm abrasion where or for skin, you know, if you've anything about skin is if you do a derm abrasion, you can remove a level of skin to get rid of blemishes. This to me reminds me of that. And some will look at it as an etch a sketch. You kind of shake it up. You can lower the life of the panel doing this too often. I would not do it unless absolutely necessary. If you have some banning, you can try to do this. But do not go in and, and start. Some people have fallen in love with this. They do it all the time. Um, I don't know for a fact it will lower the life, but from what I understand, it will. So use this um, sparingly. And it will do its own when it's powered off after long game sessions or sessions in general. So those are the settings that I would add, um, I would use with just the panel itself that you can use and, and implement when you're playing. Now we do talk about heads-up displays. I did show you in Doom. 
Um, we do talk about them in multiplayer, and many of you are concerned with long gaming sessions with multiplayer. But in reality, a lot of single-player games as well, where you're talking about long campaigns, multiplayer, many times, the heads-up display will go back to the game lobby and then switch back over to the actual action, where if you're playing a game like Demon Souls that you see here, you know, you will have a lot on screen that could be problematic. Now, even in the settings like a game like Demon's Souls, the settings aren't there the way they were in, in Doom. If you look here for display, it doesn't really give you that. Um, the display adjustment you see is actually an HDR setting. But if you go into game here, yes, it allows you to remove the HUD, but in a lot of you know, a lot of these games, they're very hard to play without a heads-up display unless you've beaten them in the past. Now, ultimately, we would like most games to be this way, where, you know, those icons on screen do go away. And just wanted a, a second to show you how gorgeous this game actually looks on PS5 and on the LG. But, you know, a lot of people will say, well, make sure you, you disable um, the heads-up display. That's not always possible, and I don't think it's actually necessary. Now we're on the Series X or Xbox. We're switching over to consoles. Remember going back into, instead of display, go over to preference and you'll see idle options. And you'll see dim screen after two minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. Enable that. And the show me things when idle is what will show you different achievements, things of that nature. I leave that blank. And again, this is just that little bit of safeguarding um, that I feel is necessary. And to, again, more of this is to ease your mind than um, actually being 100% necessary. It all depends on how much you use things. I'm going to COD. And what we're looking to do is just show you a little multiplayer. And then I'll show you my steps. Now, before we go into any gameplay, it's one of those things, too, where we talked about the differences in lobbies. And, and we're talking about lobbies such as multiplayer versus single player. Now, many of you like to leave this. You'll be in a lobby. You'll get out of the lobby. And then this screen will be on. There's obviously a ton going on on screen here as well. I'm just showing you the different scenarios there's a many things on screen if you look at it here and what you would do is again your screen will time out in a few minutes and then you're good so that's why that other safeguard some of you like to leave the game you get booted out of your lobby you go do something you come back that's why you want to have that ability to dim your screen so even as we jump into a multiplayer game here now it's funny about Call of Duty. I'm going to share this with you real quick. If somebody has a Series X and you start and your game is extremely choppy, I'll show you a quick trick how to go back to your 120 FPS. See how choppy that is? So, off topic, on topic, all you're going to do is go over to settings. And what you're looking to do is give it a second. You see that instant game response is launched? It gets stuck at times. Go back. Go back into your game, and we're beautiful again. I should do a separate video on that. It's happened to me a few times. So again, you're looking at, you know, Call of Duty. I'm in a private match, so you won't be seeing me fight anybody. But you look at everything that's on screen. So you're looking at, you know, the compass. You're looking at my name. You're looking at everything here. That's an awful lot to be on screen at the same time. So let's pretend like we're fast forwarding five hours, six hours, we're playing the same game. Even with that lobby, you're playing the same game. You're playing Warzone. This is my exact routine. This is what I do at the end of a game set or game session, I should say. All right, so we're going to go in. turn off console 
my basement may get very noisy as the heat down here. Let the system shut off. Here's your YouTube. I actually still had something running, so let me show you that again. So it's simple. Going into YouTube here. Sign yourself in, come down. And what I do is this exact thing. Library, I create demos, favorite demos. And what I do is you have the play all feature here. And then I go on YouTube and primarily what I'm looking for is full screen demos. Here are some of my favorites um, from LG Global. You've seen them all on the channel, Samsung. I typically use ones that don't have any writing on the screen. Um, but that's, you know, here's the one from HDR channel I really like. And also my friend Jennifer Gala, you know, use her demos. All you do is basically say play all and let them run. Now they're only a few minutes long, but the key here is they are full screen. And the idea is to get every pixel back working and running and letting it run on something other than the static image that you had previous. That's all we're looking to do. Now I know this is a very long way. I could have made this video five minutes for you, but showing you my routine and the different usages for it. So this would have typically run for, how long is that one? One minute, 15 seconds. Jen's about three minutes, something like, you know, Jen's has a lot of space, but she has full, they're all full screen, but something like this, the more colorful, the better. Now, even though you see the, um, the writing in the corner, it's not really something I care a whole lot about as it's different than what was on screen before. But demos like this that you can find that are, again, are full screen, they're very colorful, and set yourself up a play mode in your library of liked videos, make it as a playlist and just put favorite demos on it and just let them run and something that's immersive something again not you know anything with letterbox you want to get all these pixels firing in different colors now there's no real science behind this this is what i do and that's all I'm passing to you. For Andreas and for Steve, you guys want to know what I do when I game? And it's a little bit of effort, yes. But when you're done gaming or whatever you're doing, literally spend two minutes, three minutes. You don't have to run them all. But run these few. Run one. Two minutes. You can do that while you're cleaning up your space or shutting down the rest of your equipment. So even as you're shutting down your stuff, go right into YouTube, let this run, and that's basically all I do. And this is going to sound ridiculous, but while you're doing this, and I feel this way about OLEDs above all other TV technology right now, is that when I'm going through these uh, demos, it sounds ridiculous, but these are the demos that you would see in store that make you say to yourself, damn, this is why I bought this. And I know that's a psychological thing, but when you're saying to yourself, like, wow, why am I doing this extra work? Look at that image. These are the demos you see in store and OLEDs to see no light bleed or blooming to look at that and go, wow. So I find myself staring at that, watching that for a few minutes and it kind of justifies that little bit of extra effort, a little bit of extra maintenance, which is more than worth it for me. Is it worth it to you? I don't know, but these are my steps. I know this has been a video that's all over the place, which is just my style. But for all of you that are fearful, um, don't be afraid of burning. All these steps aren't necessary. These are just a few of the safeguards, and this is just my routine of what I do. Now, do I do it every single time if I'm gaming quick? Not really, but I'm so used to it now. It's just a good practice to get into, and if you're somebody that varies content and, and you do watch different content, and I should have said this earlier in the video, is that this panel is primarily used down here. So when I'm gaming for long periods of time, that might be the only type of game I play 
for the next few days. So I am using, I'm not varying my content where some of you guys are streaming, then you're watching cable, then you're watching news, then you're watching sports. If you're doing that, you're going to be absolutely fine. These steps are if you can't vary content. And some people will say, well, look, I don't have time to vary content. I don't watch all these different types of things. All we're doing with these demos is basically simulating varying content that's all we're doing here is taking you know practices of content and we're streaming them and we're actually kind of making it happen so all we're really doing is kind of pretending that we're varying content that's all we're doing a little shout out to jennifer gala this is her work she is a creator and filmmaker but again shout out to all you guys thank you so much for all the amazing comments and encouragement don't be afraid of oled you know uh, don't be scared of it i think it's definitely worth this little bit of extra maintenance to enjoy what i think is the best picture quality out there for now anyway all right guys thank you as always again um enjoy your oleds and just take these few steps and if you can learn anything from it i think that would be helpful and just a little bit of maintenance a little bit of extra care and uh, they will last you a very very long time all right guys have a great night i will talk to you soon and i will see you in the comments take care